Hello ladies and gents. So, I was definitely not going to make a video about this this uh this little job we're on. Um if you all remember, this is a, the last video I posted was about how this was wired incorrectly and I had to rewire it and <coughs> So how I had to rewire it and got them up and running, submitted a bid to to rewire the unit and run new wires and all that good stuff. So it finally got approved. We had our fan wires right here and our heater wires right here. And they were going directly into heater one, heater two, and directly into fan one, fan two. So I did some rewiring here, um, we managed to use the fan delay and, I mean the defrost heater limit and the fan delay. So I didn't have a lot of time, it was after hours and uh, we couldn't do a whole lot that night. But the reason I'm making a video today is because we came out here to, to fix it properly to, to use that defrost termination on the ground right there. But we found out some interesting things on this call. So, so right now we'll go up to the condensing unit and I'll explain to you why the installers went straight to the heaters and straight to the fans and why they totally ignored the safeties and the fan delay. So we'll get to that. Alright, and so we're back in here. So this is what we found out. <clears throat> we found out that this condensing unit is using three separate circuits. Yes, three separate circuits. So you have your control circuit which is pretty much your defrost clock and your defrost clock has is controlling for example three controls your contactor upstairs at the condensing unit four controls your contactor for the fans the problem is that down here at the evaporator where this is we have a separate circuit of 220 volts to the heaters and 220 volts to the fans not the same circuit as the control circuit it is a different 220 volt circuit so the compressor and the condenser fan motor upstairs is a 460 volt circuit there's a transformer upstairs that steps down from 460 to 220 that 220 will control your clock and only your clock so you pretty much have your control circuit on a step down transformer you have your compressor on a 460 volt circuit and then you have a third circuit your third circuit controls your voltage to your heaters and your fans now why did somebody do this I don't know that's just what we found out today Alright, gents, so this is on top of the box, and if you notice, uh, this one and this one, these are two wires that are coming from the condensing unit that are not being utilized right here. So what we're going to do with these, we're going to tie them in to these two. Black is black, and then blue is red. We're, these, This is going to be our neutral and our termination um, remember the reason was we have a couple circuits so once we go up to the condensing unit it will all make sense alright gents so this is what we ended up doing those two wires that we fished in are these two they are gonna go into this uh, we had to add that uh, defrost termination right there it's going to open up at 55 degrees. Now, it may seem stupid to have that termination, 
this heater limit and then that fan delay up there. You see we clipped that brown wire? We clipped that brown wire because we're not going to use that, that wire. The reason behind it is because this, this switch is off of the control voltage. This is going to be off of its own separate uh, circuit. Um, because we cannot use either either one of these wires as N, you know, as a common wire between heaters and fans, which we can run through this three wire <clears throat> fan delay defrost termination switch. So this is only going to act as a fan delay. This is going to act as defrost termination. And then this is just going to be a heater limit, heater safety. All right, so now that we're at the condensing unit, this is what I was talking about, about three separate circuits. So if you see right here, this is a 480 volt circuit. All right, and then we have a 208 volt circuit for the heaters. And then we have this transformer that goes from 480 and we're using it as 240. So this is why this call is, I'm not going to say dumb, but it was a good call. This is a good, this was a good follow up. Um, it, it really opens your eyes to some of the stuff that's out there. So this is my main condensing unit voltage right here so when you shut the condensing unit off you kill your power and then you kill your uh, control voltage that's your control out of your clock between 1 and N right there we got 0 but this is where it gets funky See that? That's the main power to my heaters. It's 208 volts. So this is the reason why we could not use the two uh, heater wires, the two fan wires, and run a four-wire circuit with a defrost termination. So that is the main reason we grab these two wires downstairs it's gonna go to a uh, defrost termination switch and we're just gonna tie these wires in uh, right here to N right here and where's X and to X right here so then this right here this is not on this 220 circuit it's gonna be on the 208 volt circuit from the transformer. I understand two things now. One, I understood why the installers ran the heater, uh, the two heater wires directly from the contactor and the two fan wires directly from the contactor. They really had no other option. It still doesn't explain why they did not utilize the heater safety or the fan delay. However, Another thing that I found out is why did that transformer burn out? You can see right there. I think what happened is these guys, whoever the installers were, tried to wire it in as a four wire, right? But this transformer can't handle the load of the fans, much less the load of the defrost heaters. So they must have wired it up the way the schematic showed and they burnt this down. They pretty much burnt that uh, transformer up. That's why you have all that melted crap back there. Uh, we got the fans disconnected. Um, wanted to get that coil pretty cold and then set it into defrost. So see how long it takes to, see how long it takes for the X terminal to engage and kick it out of defrost we're still running defrost we're waiting for that 
defrost termination to close at 55 degrees, which is going to kick our time clock out of defrost back into refrigeration mode. And we'll know that because we will still be within the defrost time here, but just for the test purposes. So let's raise a couple more. There we go. So this right here would terminate defrost based on time. And the defrost termination switch is going to base it off of temperature. So now we can actually run 45 minutes without, without running our box up to like 90 degrees like last time. Good. Yeah. All right, Jen. So we just came out of defrost. As you can see, we're in refri refrigeration mode. And we're still, our time clock is still in a defrost state up here. But we're in refrigeration mode and this is our fans I'm trying to see if all right so it currently has no amp draw which means that the fans aren't on yet so we're pulled in however the only thing keeping our fans off is the time delay so here in a few seconds once that coil reaches 25 degrees we should get we should start seeing our amp draw, which means that the fans kicked on. All right, Jensen, there it is. There's our fans. Just kicked on. So that fan delay is working. Just verified the fan delay is working. Verified that the defrost termination is working. And we just set set our uh, time clock back to where it was. So, so that's it. That was a pretty good call today. Like I said, this wasn't going to become a video until we started figuring out what the uh, installers did and what kind of uh, kind of hurdles they had to go through. But you can see right there, man, I still think that's funny. They burned that transformer up. You can see it's, there's a bunch of crap up here. So I can only imagine these guys connected it, said send it, and then that thing started smoking. <laughs> Ah... Uh.